Since opening in 2012, Shambhala has dominated the Port Ventura skyline. Shambhala is an iconic hypercoaster manufactured by Bolliger and Mabillard, better known as B&M, which stands at 249 feet tall, with its tallest drop being an impressive 255 feet. When planning your visit, it might seem too daunting to ride, or, like me, you might get excited about all the little details of this feat of engineering. But either way, I'm here to review it based on the ride experience, the queue, and the overall theme. Let's get started on the ride experience, the main draw of this attraction, but to truly assess what it's like to journey to the Himalayas on this ride, I will first walk you through each part of the layout. Once your lap bar restraint is down, you turn a corner into the huge lift hill, which despite being a chain lift is surprisingly fast. You will probably notice a little camera either on the back of the seat in front of you, if you are on a wing seat, or in the middle of the two seats in front if not. This will be filming you while you ride so you can purchase your rider cam footage, which I did for my first ride of 16 in that week. Now, once the camera is on, it's a good idea to put your hands up. The train will reach the crest of the hill before you know it, and you're going to want to feel the hang time before the first drop. The chain lift slows and the train almost hangs off the side of the drop. So on the front row, which I was lucky enough to get on using single rider, you feel completely weightless. On the back row, it feels much faster with less of the floating airtime feeling. So if that's more your thing, I'd try to avoid the front few rows. Then you plummet 255 feet into a small tunnel, which combined with the hang time makes you feel like you're flying. The main skill of this coaster is smooth transitions, which can be quite hard with an older coaster, but the first drop is like butter. I thought that from the hang time going down the drop, you would slam into your seat at the bottom. However, the embanked turn at the bottom allows you to glide back into your seat. The tunnel is a fun headbanger moment, where most people put their hands down, but don't worry about hitting anything. The coaster has been fully tested with a clearance envelope. Immediately after, you fly over another hill, which provides some nice floating airtime on every row. To me, this hill is more of a transition to the next element, than a standout section of the coaster. However, each of the hills are well placed to seem like a mountain range, which makes the pops of airtime more thoughtful. This is where Shambhala becomes a really big deal. The ampersand turn. Most hypercoasters follow an out and back layout, which means they go through the first set of hills, do a turnaround with either an embanked turn or a hammerhead turn which is tighter, go over some more hills and then back into the station. However, Shambhala spices this up. The ampersand turn is often mistaken for a figure of eight, but this non-inverted element is modelled after its namesake, the ampersand, or the and symbol. As you ascend through the turn, it feels like you're soaring over the park, nearly dodging the huge supports, but by the time you've reached the top, you can feel the coaster pulling you back down as if you'd stopped in mid-air. The descent is fast, and it needs to be for the next element to work. The airtime hill. A little crest appears, and it looks quite silly, being so small compared to the massive coaster before it. However, as the train goes over it, you are treated to some incredible ejector airtime, which launches you out of your seat. Thankfully, the lap bar restraints are very forgiving, which means the restraint is comfortable and moves to account for the airtime. So whether you are being ejected forwards on the back row or flying upwards on the front, you won't be getting bruised legs. There's another taller hill now, which provides more satisfying floating airtime, but quickly turns downwards into a small pit of water, which the coaster glides over the top of, accompanied by water jets, which create the illusion of the ride skimming over the water. If your hands are up, you might catch some of the water, which is always refreshing in the summer, but if you're visiting in the winter, they normally turn the water off. Once again, there's another hill, some nice airtime, and it takes you over the entrance path to the Shambhala area, which is a great photo opportunity. Then, there's another small hill, which dips down into your ride photo. Smile for the camera if you're not a fan of the 16 euro price tag for your ride video. Then you're into a brake run. Once your speed is minorly reduced, you float through two additional hills before making your way back into the station. I would consider the last section of the ride the flying part, 
because it mainly serves as a slowing down area to ensure that there isn't an abrupt stop at the end, making this coaster even more smooth. So, that's Shambhala, a mighty layout packed into a two and a half minute ride. Personally, it has to be my top five coasters. No other ride provides as much airtime and certainly hasn't been built with longevity in mind quite as much as this. It's incredibly well maintained down to the sleek paint job on the track and the amazing ride experience. To further review the ride experience, let's go into the train design. The train can hold 32 people across 8 cars, which have staggered seating, meaning the layout has two seats in the middle, then the row behind has a seat either side, so that the coaster looks like it is organised in rows of four from the front, but actually has what can be considered as wing seats. Personally, the best experience is had on the wing seats. You feel much more exposed and the wide turns have much more of an effect when your view isn't obstructed. As I mentioned earlier, the back row is speedy and whips you around the track without being rough, which is ideal for the ejector airtime, and the front row is simply incredible. I'd say my best ride was on the front row. It was my last ride of the week and after sitting on nearly every row of the coaster, I was expecting big things from it. The day beforehand, I sat on the second row, wing seat, and it was exhilarating, but I'll talk more about my experience with that later on. So I didn't think a row ahead could be much better. Maybe it was the fact that I'm a coaster enthusiast, or maybe it was just that good, but I was grinning ear to ear for the full experience. The hang time was immense. I had to close my mouth for the sight of the tunnel rushing towards me, and all I could see ahead of me was track. The train had disappeared, and it was just me, soaring through the summer air. Of course, to get front row, you have to pay for a special fast pass, but as I was a single rider for most of the week, I got the privilege of riding it on the best seat in the house. It's an undisturbed view with unparalleled airtime. The aforementioned ride on the second row proves something to me about the ride design that every The Big One fan will understand, and it's that wind is its worst enemy. I got stuck in the Shambhala station for 40 minutes due to high winds, which meant a ride close to 10 o'clock at night ended in a 10.30 tragedy. I got into my seat and the winds detected exceeded the safe amount, so the power to the ride was instantly shut off, meaning I couldn't get off if I wanted to. It's an incredible system that efficiently makes safety a priority, and while feeling the train rattling beneath me wasn't the most fun experience, it was cool to see how it worked. Once the wind had settled, the train before us that was waiting in the brake run had already had its guests freed from their seats with what looked like a wrench, as the restraints can only be lifted with a power supply or a special key, and we immediately set off into the windy night. It was insanely fast and the airtime felt so much more crisp when breaking the wind, although I wouldn't recommend getting stranded like I did, but once again, it's quite a funny story. As for its stats, it has a top speed of 83 miles per hour and a maximum g-force of 3.8, which means that forces of nearly four times your body weight will press on you throughout the ride. Its layout was designed by John Wardley, who you might recognise from the design of one of the UK's most iconic coasters, Nemesis, so you're pretty much guaranteed a top-class thrill experience. Overall, the ride experience is a 10 out of 10, a must ride for anyone who is even slightly interested in it. It's coasters like these that make being a coaster enthusiast so rewarding. But to get on the ride, you have to queue. Ugh, boring, I know, right? However, Shambhala's queue is surprisingly tolerable, as not only do you get a world-class coaster at the end of it, but on most days, it has a pretty good throughput. Yes, the park isn't known for its ride operations, but the only times I saw the ride not get trains through is when a family had an argument with the ride ops for not giving them fast pass for going up the wrong queue with a push chair, people having disputes about the height of their child and similar incidents. So it's not really the staff member's fault. If you don't have people holding up the queue and getting on the ride without taking selfies, you should be getting through the cattle pen queue fairly fast. The longest I waited in the main queue was 30 minutes, but I always avoided riding it in the morning because the queues were always the biggest when the sun was beating down. It's well themed to an extent. You were in a temple style building with a few fans, nothing much to look at, but if we're being honest, you spend the whole time you're standing there 
watching Shambhala and Dragon Khan duel each other. It can get quite hot, so if you need a re little refreshment, there are two vending machines in the queue, which dispense big, cold bottles of water, which were my best friend during the heatwave, or other soft drinks if you're not too parched. I think it's a nice little touch for those sometimes long waits to ride this amazing coaster. Although, if you're riding solo on your trip, Shambhala has a single rider line. For most of the trip, this queue was filled with actual single riders, groups of one or two. And while it's open to any group size willing to be split up, it meant on one day I had to wait longer than the main queue to get on. But I couldn't just switch over because they wouldn't be able to seat me without being in a group of two or more. I went with my family, so on most days they gave Shambhala a miss, which meant I made use of single rider quite a bit, and I sometimes used it when riding as a pair, because after the first ride, I wasn't planning on getting any more pictures. Of course, please make use of single rider. It's a great way to get on the ride faster when you're alone and fill up those empty seats. You might even encounter fellow enthusiasts while you're at it. Now we're talking about the overall theme, music, merchandise, etc. The merchandise is classic, featuring the skyline view of the coaster, accompanied either by the stats of the ride, for example its top speed or g-force, or the I Survived Shambhala logo. Even though it's not as modern as other theme park merch, I love it. It reminds me of when it opened and the coasters of that height were a massive deal then, which they still are, but with how popular inversions are, the achievement of riding something like this has lost its magnitude a bit. My only criticism is that the designs are all printed, and while I got a print shirt while I was there, I would much rather the logo be embroidered, as not only does the design last longer, but it stands out more. From people I know, the designs last on the shirts for a lot of uses, with only, mi only minor fading, but it would be ideal to permanently have the design without those worries. The theme is well thought out too, it's not over complicated, but the scale of the tunnel erupting from the ground, the towering archway with its swinging gong acting as an entrance, and the statue head leaning on the pathway is an impressive touch to match the ride. The shape of the ride is reminiscent of mountains, as the story behind the ride is that a group of explorers are venturing through the Himalayas in search of Shambhala, a hidden kingdom. And while the hills are typical of the coaster model, it still seems very suitable in the context of the area. There is also a food outlet called Dagana, which serves familiar fast food style dishes such as hamburgers and sandwiches. I didn't dine here, however it was very busy at lunchtime. Pretty much, if you're looking to spend time with the family and get on the big coasters, this area of the park is ideal, as just a three minute walk away, you will find Sesamo Ventura, the Sesame Street themed land, in one direction, and the food outlets, toilets and Dragon Khan in the other. It's a perfectly themed space with a spectacular entrance to a land surrounded by snow-capped walls. As for the soundtrack, it's quite hard to hear. The speakers were quiet on most days, which paired with the rumble of the coaster made it near impossible to hear. When you do have the chance to hear it, well, it's a great job. Powerful brass instruments accompany a choir and striking bells, which really emphasises the dominance of the coaster over everything around it. The suspenseful strings feel like a callback to the thrilling hang time on the coaster, and the drums add to the sense of adventure. I'm a huge fan of theme park music, and orchestral scores in general, and in my opinion it's a very well suited soundtrack for the ride. Although it's not one of my favourites, I can't say I'd change it. It's an exciting theme that really lifts up the ride experience but its effects on guests is limited due to it being easy to miss when traversing the area. Well, that brings me to the end of this hefty review of an incredible coaster that earns its place in my top 10. If you love coasters, Portaventura is a must visit, especially for this credit. But even if you don't, or even have a fear of them, this soaring, roaring masterpiece will win your heart. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, Make sure to check out my other videos in my Podventura series and like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.